What's going on everybody? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into one of the tools I use frequently in Lightroom Classic, and that's the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, and how it can help you fine tune your images as you do your processing. Let's jump right into it. All right, so here we are back in Lightroom Classic. And before I start walking you through all the different things that the Alt key in Windows or the Option key in Mac can do for you as you're processing your images, let's start by doing a quick look at our histogram in the upper right hand corner here. So looking at this right now, I don't have any part of the histogram bumping strongly up against the right edge here. So it means that my highlights are in good shape. Conversely, if you look over at the left, I do have a little bit of the histogram touching the left side and this little white triangle up here is actually lit up, indicating that there is some portion of the image that's clipping. Now, all clipping means is that either you've exposed the image poorly in camera and you're losing data or you didn't capture data in a particular part because it was too dark or it was too bright, or as you're adjusting the image, you're essentially doing the same thing by either overexposing or underexposing certain parts of the image. In the terms of blacks, when you start clipping, it's often referred to as crushing the blacks. And all it really means is, as I clip more and more of the image, the darks are really just gonna become black blobs. Now, if I were clipping my highlights, I'm essentially going to be turning those parts of the image pure white and any detail that might be there is gonna to be totally lost because I've overexposed the brighter parts of my, my scene. So this little triangle in the upper left corner and you've got the same one in the upper right, that's a real quick visual indicator that you have some part of your image that's clipping. You may have noticed as I was hovering on this left one, if we look down in the lower left of the image, there's some blue splotchiness showing up. So that's telling me exactly what parts of the image are currently clipping in the darks. If I were to come down to my basic panel and pop it open, and if I'd start dragging my exposure to the right and get that to the point where my lights are clipping, now we can see we've got the same white triangle indicator in the upper right hand corner for my highlights. You can see the histogram is slammed up against the right side. And as I hover on that, you can see I've still got data here. I'm not clipping that much, but from an appearance standpoint, certainly this isn't what I want. So as I continue to pull this further and further to the right, I'm gonna be clipping more and more of the brighter parts of my image. And now when I hover here, I get red on my scene, which is telling me those are the portions of the image where there's absolutely no detail. Now, this is a pretty loose interpretation, in my opinion, of where you're really losing data, because if we look at the image, obviously we've lost all of that information or all of that detail that was in the sky here with this image. You can't even see the rainbow anymore. But technically, that is where you're clipping the most and where you've got the least amount of detail retained. Now, that's all well and good, but as I'm working through an edit, and let's reset this exposure slider, we'll just double click on the little slider there to reset that. But as I'm working on the image, I don't want to have to be constantly looking up at my histogram or hovering on those triangles and moving my cursor away from the slider, whatever the case may be. So there's a couple things you can do. First, you can just hit the J key on your keyboard and that's going to automatically enable the clipping alerts for both your highlights and your shadows. So now we can see down in the lower left, we've got those blue indicators turned on here. If I drag the slider to the right, you can see the red will start showing up. Now, I'm not having to hover on my histogram. I'm seeing that as I'm making the adjustment with the slider. But even there, I don't necessarily want to see the splotchiness as I'm editing because it's distracting and it takes me away from viewing just the image for what it is. So I'm going to hit the J key again to turn that off. So this is where the magic of the Alter Option key starts to come into play. So when you're in the basic panel here, anytime you're making an adjustment on a slider that affects the overall exposure or luminosity of a particular region of the image, whether it be your highlights or your shadows, it's gonna give you a visual indication on screen as you're moving the adjustment slider so that you can see exactly what parts of the image are starting to clip. And not only that, but what colors within the image are starting to clip. So let me just, again, jump into this and I'll show you an example. So on the exposure slider, it's only gonna show me my highlights as I hold down the Alt, or again, if you're using a Mac, the Option key on your keyboard. So hold down that key and then click and hold on the little slider tab and you can see your screen goes black. So on this exposure slider, as I mentioned, it's only gonna show me my highlight clipping. You can see there's already a little bit of clipping over on the right there. That's those brighter white uh, rocks in the distance, rocks or buildings, I can't tell and I can't recall right now. 
But as I start to drag this to the right while I'm holding down the Alter Option key, you're gonna see that more and more of the image is coming in and being flagged as clipping. Now you'll also notice that we've got multiple colors showing up here. So that's telling me what this specific color is clipping as I'm adding more exposure to the scene. So if you remember where that rainbow was, let me again double click and reset this. So you got the rainbow kind of in that right third of the image. So as I click and hold the alter option key and start dragging to the right, you're actually gonna see that rainbow starting to clip which means I'm losing the detail and I can't even see the rainbow anymore on this image with what I've done to the exposure. So that's number one. So as you go through these, you can get the same thing with highlights. So if I hold down Alter Option and drag my highlights to the right, you're not gonna see as much of a difference here because the whole point of your highlights and your shadow slider is to not focus on the extreme ranges of either your, your brighter parts or your darker parts of the image, but kind of the more middle tones. But again, as I drag this to the right, you do see those little splotches get a little bit more intense. Double click to reset that. Hold down Alter Option. I'm gonna drag my shadows to the left. So now I've got this white screen. The black portions are telling me I'm clipping all of the color channels. And again, you can see some different color tonality coming in there. Much like the highlight slider, it's not all that extreme. But again, the different colors that are indicated on the screen here are the specific colors that I'm starting to crush in my blacks. And we'll double click to reset that. We'll see a much more dramatic effect on the whites because that's focusing on the brightest portions of the image. So again, Alter Option, click and drag to the right. And now we can see there's my greens clipping in the rainbow, the blues are clipping in the rainbow. I've got some yellow and green in the, in the landscape itself that's starting to clip. And as I drag that across, it's just getting worse and worse. We're adding in the reds and yellows of the rainbow as well. If I go down to the black, it's gonna start with the white screen. We can already see we've got some clipping down there in the left. As I start dragging this to the left and reducing the blacks in the image, again, the colors are representative of what colors are being clipped. So I'm clipping yellows, I'm clipping greens. And if I drag this all the way down, you can see even all the way down to 100, I'm starting to clip some of those blues in there. So that's step one of how you can use the Alter Option key to help you fine tune your editing as you go through your workflow. The only other slider it's going to work on in the basics panel here is on dehaze because that does play with some of the contrast and luminosity as well. So if I click and hold on that. Now since this is a white background, it's going to be telling me where am I clipping my darker parts. So as I drag luminosity to the left, you can see I'm actually reducing the clipping. As I drag the dehaze slider back to the right, I'm going to be introducing more clipping because I'm introducing more of that contrast through the dehaze tool into the image. So that covers the basic panel. Let me collapse that back down. The other area you can use the Alter Option key to help you visualize is in the split toning panel. So split toning is gonna to be adding in a tone to either your highlights here or your shadows. So if I drag my hue slider over to the right, I'm getting no visual indication of what I'm actually gonna be doing to the image. Now a lot of people will come in here and just crank the saturation slider to 100 and then they'll start playing with the hue slider to hone in the exact color shift they wanna add into their highlights. And that's not a big deal, it's certainly doable. But all you really need to do is come over here and hold down the Alter Option key, click and drag on the hue slider, and it's immediately gonna give you a representation of if you were at 100% saturation, here's the exact color shift you're gonna be adding into your highlights. So that allows you to come in here and say, well, I wanna make my highlights a little oranger, so let me just hold down the Alter Option key and find the exact tone I want now I can come down and start adjusting my saturation and dial that into where I want that as well. Let me drop that back down to zero. Same concept with your shadows. So again, a lot of times people will just come in here and crank that saturation all the way up, but there's no need to do that. Just hold down Alter Option, start dragging to the right. It works the exact same way as the highlights. And let's say I wanna make my shadows a little bit bluer. So there's the blue tone I want. And now I can adjust the saturation. Once you've got your highlights and your shadows pulled in here to where you want them, you can also play with the balance of the two. So you can either make it lean more heavily towards that shadow tone you've added in or the highlight tone. And same thing here, if I hold down the Alter Option key, it's gonna give me a stronger representation of the overall tone that I'm kind of dialing in here with this balance slider as well. So if I let go here, now we can see exactly where I've landed in terms of my split toning. The other thing you can do here is if I hold down the Alter Option key and you watch the highlights and shadows little header here, 
As I hold it down, it gives you an option to reset your highlights and reset your shadows. So I mentioned already, by double clicking on any of these sliders, you can fully reset them. But if I don't want to have to come in here and double click on every single one of those, I can just hold down, in my case on Windows, the Alt key, click reset highlights, hold down the Alt key again and reset my shadows. And it's going to reset both sliders within the split toning panel for my highlights and shadows. So another quick tip that you get out of using the Alt and Option key. Moving down to the effects panel, you get some nice little tricks that you can do with the Alt or Option key here as well. So if I'm adding in a vignette and I start drawing this to the negative, we can obviously see how much of the vignette I'm adding but then you can do your other adjustments on the vignette to really dial it in and get it to where you want. But it's kind of hard to visualize that sometimes, especially so for me, I rarely go below 15, minus 15 or minus 20 on a vignette. So it's a very subtle vignette. I don't want it to be obvious, which makes it hard to really dial in. Where do I want my midpoint? Do I need to adjust my roundness? What's my feather look like? So on and so forth. So much like the split Tony, I could just crank this all the way to the left and say, well, I'm just going to put my vignette at minus 100. And now I can really see nice and easily what exactly am I doing with these different sliders. But that's not what I want to do. I want to see what is my end result looking like. So if I put this, uh, we'll just say minus 20. Same idea. Hold down alter option. Now you click on the midpoint slider and you're seeing it as if you had dragged that amount value all the way to minus 100 or same thing if you're doing positive on the uh, on the vignette. So now you can dial it in. So, OK, I want to pull that in a little bit more focus on the rainbow. Let go and I can see where I'm at now in terms of that overall effect. If I were just doing that without holding that key down, it's a little bit harder to see. Same exact thing with roundness. It's going to give me a visualization as if I've maxed that vignette all the way. And so I can pull that in where I want it. Same on the feather. OK, now I've got way too sharp of an edge, so I'm going to pull that back. And let's just go a little bit more of a feather on that to soften it. And then the last one here is the highlight slider. So I've got this on highlight priority right now, which means it's giving me the ability to pull my highlights back out of the vignette a little bit. So if I hold down alter option here, if you watch those those brighter points over on the far right of the image, as I pull the highlight slider over, I can see they're getting excluded more and more from the vignette. So this isn't the best image to show an example on this, but Hopefully you get the overall concept here. It's going to just help you visualize what highlights are you recovering from the vignette you're applying. So if you've got a sky that's a little bit brighter and you don't want the vignette applied there, you can use the highlight slider like that. And then the last piece and one of the most useful pieces on the main panels here is under the detail panel. So for sharpening, you can use the alter option key to help you visualize all of your sharpening as well. Now I don't find it terribly helpful, quite frankly, on amount or radius or detail. Uh, there's certainly some value there, but everything is so fine. Uh, it's really hard to see it even when you are using the alter option key trick. But where it really comes in handy is once I've got my sharpening values where I want them. So, uh, you know, let's for the sake of argument, we're going to hold down alter option on the amount slider here. And we're just going to slide this to the right and say, OK, I'm happy with where it's at right around 60. And my radius by default, I always pull it to the left since I shoot with a relatively high megapixel camera. I want a lower radius for detail. I usually leave that at 25. But for the sake of this example, let's just go ahead and crank that all the way over. Hopefully the YouTube compression doesn't butcher this. But uh, if you look closely, you can see there is a subtle difference in terms of that little grayscale, almost like embossed representation of the image. So we'll put this around 50. But where this really comes into play is on masking. So right now I have no masking applied on my sharpening, which means every single part of the image is being sharpened equally to every other part of the image, which is not necessarily what you want. So let's say I had to shoot this at a little bit of a higher ISO and I had some graininess in the sky or anything like that. I don't want to sharpen the grain because it's just going to accentuate it even more. So if we hold down alter option and then click and hold on your masking slider, now suddenly I've got an entirely white image. But as I start dragging this to the right, it's converting it more and more into a black and white representation. And what this is telling me is any part of the image that's white is going to get sharpened. Any part of the image that's black is not going to get sharpened. So you can see that sky, if I don't want any sharpening there, as I pull this to the right, I can actually pull my sharpening out of the sky and get it to a point where I'm really just getting the sharpening in the landscape portion where I want it. So this is a trick I use every single time I'm applying sharpening to an image. I always do masking. And I always use the alter option trick here to help me really hone in how much masking I want to apply to a particular image. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through it all, but you've got the same concept with noise reduction. 
And if I hold down Alter Option, it gives me a grayscale representation of the image to help me theoretically visualize where my noise is a little bit more. Now this is a very low noise image, so it's not gonna do a whole lot, but same concept, Alter Option, you can adjust the sliders and see what they're doing one by one. So I wanna keep this video relatively short. The main point of this is play around. Don't be scared to hold down Alter Option on your keyboard and click and drag on something and see what happens. You know, there's other things you can use it on when you're using local adjustments and range masking. If you're not familiar with range masking, we'll get into that in a later video. But don't be afraid. Everything within Lightroom is reversible. You can always undo it. You can always reset the entire image if you want to. You're not doing anything to your original file. So just play, have fun, figure it out, and teach yourself everything that you can do. But the main thing here is by using that Alter Option key, it's really gonna help you fine tune each of the little things you're doing to your image, whether it be sharpening, your split toning, or some of those basic panel adjustments where you're impacting the exposure or luminosity of the image. It's just gonna help you really dial that in and tune everything to exactly where you want it. Okay, and that wraps up another quick walkthrough of a nice little trick in Lightroom Classic. Whether you're just starting out or you've been using Lightroom for a little while, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit the like button, and if you wanna follow along as I continue to release more of these tutorials in the coming weeks and months, hit the subscribe button as well. As always, take care, everybody.